Welcome to the Yahaha Essentials tutorial series. My name is Chris, or you may know me better online as Julie Longhorn. I'm here with Yahaha doing these quick tutorials to show you how to set up the basics in your space. Today, we'll be going over the gameplay settings in the gameplay general tab. We can use these settings to add intrigue, drama, and most importantly, fun to our Yahaha spaces. I've switched things up for this Essentials tutorial. I like the beach, but I also like variety. So I've chosen the Cube Planet template to give us a change of scenery while we walk through the General tab in the Gameplay Settings panel. The General tab holds the settings we need to control how our spaces behave. I go over the General tab in the Studio walkthrough video, which covers Respawn, Inventory, and Background Music, or VGM. Since then though, Yahaha has added many new options. Let's go over them all now. One of the new sections, the Game Type section, allows us to select from different types of game. Each game type allows us to set its mechanics. Let's walk through each of them. The first option is Adventure. It allows for extended, flexible, adventure-style gameplay which means it doesn't have any of the specific settings we'll find in the other game types. Time Limited allows the designer to set a pre-game launch countdown and a game end timer. We can, of course, drag the sliders or directly enter numbers. Item Collection allows us to choose a type of item to collect selected from the Choose Item pop-up. We can also set number of items to collect, number of possible winners, and game timers to add extra drama. For survive, the winner is the last player to survive in the space. It allows us to set game timers, adding extra tension. Enemy kill includes settings for the number of enemies to be killed, number of winners, whether enemies can spawn, and, of course, those game timers. Monster kill is similar, but cooler because, you know, monsters we can select which monster to throw at our players, how many monsters the players will face, number of winners, and the option, once again, to torture our players with the clock. Racing allows us to set a race destination, because you can't race to nowhere, number of winners, and, you guessed it, game timers. And finally, if we don't want any predefined settings in our spaces, we can choose none. This has no settings or conditions, allowing us to start from a blank slate. The rest of the sections in the General tab appear no matter which game type is selected. Another section Yahaha has added since we began these tutorials is View Control, where we can set how the camera and mouse behave in a space. Cursor Preferred leaves the mouse cursor available full-time and requires the player to hold the right mouse button to control the camera. On the other hand, Flexibility Preferred sets the mouse to always control the camera and requires the player to press the ALT key to activate the cursor for cursor interactions within the space. And boom! You'll want to choose whichever one of these best serves the style of gameplay within your space. Respawn gives the designer power of the respawn behavior and time settings in the space. We'll cover the basics again here, but for more detail, check out the Respawn component video. As almighty designers, we can have the player respawn at a random point, the default spawn point, the point nearest to the player's death, or at progressive checkpoints. We can also set how long it takes the player to respawn after death, and add an audio file to be played when respawning. If we want the player to have inventory, we can manage those mechanics in the inventory section where we can disable it entirely if we choose. We'll go over these settings in depth in the items tutorial. For now, let's just take a quick look at them. Pickup type lets us set the way a player picks up items in the space. Auto sets the items in a space to be automatically picked up when the player gets within the pickup distance set below. Manual allows us to show a pickup menu when the player is within pickup distance, allowing the player to select which items to pick up. 
We can also control the maximum number of items a player can carry in their inventory with max capacity. Pickup Audio allows us to set an audio file to play at pickup, and Pickup Distance is the distance at which players may pick up items. Background Music, which can help set the mood in a space, is another game component we can manage in the General tab. Check out the audio video for details about how to upscale your game with background music. Groups are cool, and they're another upgrade we've gotten since the first tutorial. Enabling groups gives players the chance to form groups for voice and text chat, allowing them to connect with, or harass, their circle of friends while chilling in our spaces. We can control the maximum size of these groups by setting max. Groups allow private conversations separate from the rest of the players in a space. Finally, we've come to the last section, AI player. In the AI player section, we can add AI controlled players to our spaces, making sure our human players have competitors or teammates, especially in spaces that only work with multiple players. Max sets the maximum number of AI players in a space. Generating a nav mesh will allow AI players to navigate our spaces effectively. I'll be covering nav meshes in depth in a future video. Currently, there's only a default AI type, but in the future, we may get more AI types and the capability to customize them. As you can see, the gameplay general settings give us mastery over our spaces, allowing us to create truly unique, truly interactive spaces. That's all for this tutorial, but we still have several more elements to cover. So don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified when we post more Yahaha Essentials tutorials. Also, be sure to visit us on Discord and in the forums to discuss space creation. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all again soon.